JD here. Welcome to my channel. Again, please subscribe. Please hit like. Please give me the, the tum. Give me the tum. And I want to get to 10,000 views. And after I get 10,000 views, I'm going to quit. Just kidding. So I've got to open this case here. So my friend gave me his Seiko Sport 200 meter automatic 23 joules, all kinds of crap going on. And he said it's not working properly. So not sure what that means, but he gave it to me to have a look at to see what I could do. Um, so the bezel sounds pretty good here. It's like a double click, dual click bezel, likely 120 clicks on this bezel, but I can't get it open. So I've got a, this jobby do hickey here that I use to open things. Of course, I dropped everything on the floor. Why don't you drop everything on the floor, you idiot? This is a super live, unprofessional video. Okay, so, so there you go. So I've got this tool here I bought a long time ago. Because you can never have too many tools, as I've said to you before. And this, I put this in here. It's going to help me open this up. But you don't want to put the watch down direct. I have a, another opener that's even better than this one. I've got two other openers, actually, that are... I've used to open up Rolexes and stuff. That's even a higher quality, so I want to get myself a cloth to put down there first, but you put these thingamajabi doohickeys in the holes here, and then you have to open this thing up like this. This thing weighs a lot, actually. And it came with screws to screw it into a bench, and it's probably a better way of using it uh, than what I'm doing right now. So, so that's that. Now, the watch probably won't even touch the ground. I move this over one more. Yeah, and actually that's not bad right there. And you want to just get it in snug so it doesn't move. Like that. And that's just providing it a solid base to turn <coughs> your opener here. So so it doesn't slip. So I'm gonna just try that out and see if it works. Now this is your standard Benford 4000 opener here. And let's turn this at a bit of an angle here. And put this in here. And then if this doesn't work, I'm going to get a different opener because I've got other openers. That will give me more leverage. But this might give me enough leverage here. It's a lot of leverage, baby. There we go. Took a little bit of a crank, but I got it. <clears throat> Did not have to open another one. Another opener. So knowing my friend, this thing is pretty dirty, I bet. Crud. See, it's got crud. Leftover crud. I don't want to mess my mat up. So, so there's the movement. Uh, let me point down on this thing here so you can have a look at it. There is the movement. So this is a Seiko movement. Uh, what is this movement? This is a 7536B is the name of the watch. So, and I'll have to look up what that movement is though. But it's got a wind, a dual winder. So it'll wind the watch whether it's spinning one way or the other. And it has, it looks like, um, I'm going to turn this around a bit because I want to get access to the stem here and be able to just turn the stem on this and see what, see what's happening here. When I turn the stem, what do I get here? Oh, that's just, this is not the stem for winding. This is the stem for, for turning that dial or that disc 23 joules so it says 7s36b so i was wrong i thought that was something else 7s36b so i can look at the disassembly instructions of a 7s36b but really what's wrong with it i don't know i don't know yet anyway so that's the stem there for it i'm going to unwind this stem here because i know it'll the time will set on it
Now I think that stem is turning. Gotta get in super close and have a look here for a second with my eyeballs. Yeah, that's turning. The problem with this, I keep hitting the camera with my hat. So pull this out. Two turns. And that'll set the watch. I don't think this will drop out. It's being held in place here. So it basically sets the watch here. So this should also be, when I do this, this should wind the watch. So, and it's not winding the watch. I don't know why, but it's not winding the watch. And you can see the, um, yeah, the rotor is barely turning. So what I'm going to do is turn the rotor manually and see if I can get any action on the rotor. So here I'm just turning the mainspring. And this is accomplishing what you'd accomplish if you're winding it manually. I'm going to look up this movement because I think it should be winding and hacking. So I'm not sure why it wouldn't do the winding part. Something might be broken. Now this has got an automatic watch mainspring in it. So you can't overwind it, it'll just slide on the inside. There's barrel grease you put on the inside. Maybe I should tell my friend all he needs to do is get a screwdriver out and wind his watch every morning like that. So, so that's that. That's out of the way. I'm just going to get a piece of Rodico to move the rotor out of the way. Um, yeah, it's some finding it very strange that this is just free flowing. It's not winding anything. So the, there might be this stem might be broken. Not absolutely sure. But I'll have to disassemble this and find out what is wrong with it. Because if you take the rotor mechanism off this watch, um, you can then get access to the uh, to the manual mechanisms, because I think the 7S36B movement should be winding and hacking. And if you look at the watch now, it's running, going to run quite well. It actually probably has an excellent amplitude. I'm going to do a slow motion video of this and show you what the amplitude looks like. And there's the watch ticking away. Let me move it to slow mo here and take my movie. So five seconds in slow mo is usually good enough, and this is this is what I'm ending up getting here. Uh, no, it's not even going around 360 degrees, so it's not great. So definitely a cleaning is in order here. Um, but I'll check it on the time graph or two to see what kind of a what kind of an output I'm getting, and that was wound enough for this to not have an issue. So, and I just don't understand why this is not working. And I know that this dial here, all it does is turn the outer ring, so it really doesn't do anything. So I think it's time to strip down a 7s. 36 movement so so there so there I get rid of my face and do a little bit of work on this thing so the first thing I want to do is get rid of these straps so I'm lucky because it's got little strap buttons on the side which is pretty friggin handy I should have invented those many years ago for us poor ass watchmakers who need to figure out how they work. Yeah. And I think the rotor, I'm not sure, but I think the rotor just screws right out unless the whole rotor mechanism comes out. 
but I'm going to hold it steady for a second and see there might be a special tool to remove this rotor or not <laughs> it's funny whenever I think there's something special there isn't so so that rotor removes without a problem there we go get that out of the way so there's the mechanisms here and I'm gonna have to go a little bit lower here to see what I'm doing to make sure I don't screw this up And I want to make sure this is in focus. So we're just going to focus this a bit. I think, is that good enough? Just say yes if it is. So, this is the automatic winding rotor mechanism Seiko invented many, many moons ago. Um, I'm having a look at it right now to make sure I don't screw this up. So yeah, it's got a claw on one side and a claw on the other. What I'm not sure about is this wheel here. So This wheel might be friction fit and it may have to be removed from below. Not absolutely sure about that. And this is the automatic winding mechanism. So the question is if I unscrew this, will this whole unit come up? Maybe not. Don't know. Because, because, I think this wheel here, it's got the lines here, which means it goes the other way. It effectively goes in the other direction. But for watches like this, like I said, normally I do pocket watches. But, but for watches like this, I usually take photos as I'm disassembling it just to make sure I'm not screwing that up. And I've done some pretty complex watches in my time. But I'm going to just see if I can do this. I don't think my friend Jim cares. He just wants to see this thing working again. He just dumped it on me. He's like, hey, you're a watchmaker. Why don't you fix this? And I just said, okay, I'll do that. As a challenge, right? Take these parts and move them out of the way. I'm going to get my stick out too. My Bergeron stick. The world's best stick. And the stick will just keep things steady while I'm... I'm worried about this wheel here. I'm, I'm curious as when I lift this thing up, will the wheel lift up as well? I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah, there you go. Just throw that, throw that right in where the friggin' balance is. There. There we go. I'm leaving this in here for stability. I should probably have taken the movement out. Funny how the watch actually stopped. Yeah, I might have to get the manual for this thing before I screw it up. Because what I'm curious about is this here. This is a winding mechanism. Usually, it'll wind another wheel below it, and then that'll. transfer that wind so I'm a little bit nervous about this I may have to may have to get the the um, manual for this and do it properly I fear that you don't want to pull on parts on a watch um, and I've done more complex watches than this but I've always had some kind of a manual available to look at. So I think the three, the manual for this Seiko is readily available. So 
So I'm going to see if I can find the manual before I fart around with this any further. It's funny how the balance stopped that way. You wouldn't think that would happen. But stuff happens. For these small watches, it is a good technique to actually grab your your tweezers and use the tweezers to help you align the screw as you put it back in place. And that is the absolute truth. So that's what we're going to do. This is, I guess, phase one. I'll make a bunch of short videos on this because I don't want to screw this thing up. Here we go. Keep sliding off here. And I'm not sure why the balance would have stopped. But I'm going to get it going again. There we go. Actually going nicely. So what I don't understand here with this particular movement is, is why when I turn the winding mechanism here, it's not winding the watch, because that would be winding and hacking. And the other thing I don't know is how to get the stem out. It's a pretty rigid or rugged looking stem, so and I can see the mechanism that's holding it in. Yeah, we're gonna have to get the manual for this, so that's it for now. That's all I want to do. So just a little teaser here for you. So that's the Seiko movement. And I should be able to get this thing working. So I'll just have to put this in a jar. In a jar. Arr. And get this thing going at a later date. That is the jar, my friends. So watch is going into a jar this is my new micro camera here it's pretty good except it's not out of focus so if I want to do super close work um, I gotta figure that out it's funny when I took this apart here the screw here on top is part of the unit which is odd unless it just falls out because it screws onto this pipe here right there that's how that works so I just I just need to get the manual because I don't know what this wheel is for I know the Rolexes I've worked on have had these wheels here and they're friction fit and you had to have a special tool to get underneath it to pull it up so you don't want to fart with that if you don't have the right instructions so this is where I say all right I'm giving up for a little short period of time until I can figure this out. But I'm going to put the strap along the edges here. And you're not going to see this because you're too close. So so that's it. So that's it for today. Oh, well, there's a strap along the edges. That's it for today. So JD here again. i got all sorts of watch stuff on the go. And while I've got your interest, while I've got your interest, I'm going to bring out another watch that my friend... Uh, nicely provided me this one right here it's another Seiko and this is a Seiko quartz and I use the program time is t-i-m-e-i-s I think it's timeis.com to check the time on this thing so this Seiko quartz um, he said it's running uh, fast or slow one or the other but it's not running on time and I said well it's a quartz I don't know how the hell that would happen and 
I don't think it's dirt of any type, but it, it can get old and the coil can get old in this and a capacitor is used as a timing device in this watch. So that's this is the insides of this watch here, right? So five whole joules. So the, the interesting thing here is to actually time this watch. Um, this brass screw here, it has a left and right symbol. This is what's used to actually time the watch. So without a, wa a quartz watch tester, you're just you're eyeballing it and turning it left or right, right? So this is likely what I'm going to do because I don't have a quartz watch tester. Um, and I want to time this watch properly, right? So it looks like he lost his thing there. Anyway, so I'm going to have to turn that left or right. Now what I did already is I set the time to exactly the seconds. So now I can, I don't believe it's the battery because he said he's had battery changes and it still runs fast or slow. I can't remember which it is. But you want to keep your your tools away from the solenoid in there because you don't want to have to replace the solenoid. I'll clean the movement or the case out a bit, but the other parts of the watch are probably fine. But what I'm going to do is let this thing run overnight. And I'm going to look at it in the morning and bring that webtimeis.com up and see if the time is, is off. Because this is hacking because it's a quartz watch. And I just set it, and I just set it, and now I can look exactly what time it is. Now the bezel on the inside is not exactly aligned properly, so I'm not sure how that happened, but it's not aligned. I believe I did work on this watch almost 20 years ago when I first do it, started doing watch repair, and it wasn't working, and I cleaned it up and fixed it and stuff for him, so... I might even have replaced this inner ring here for him. I can't remember. It's too far, too long ago. I don't even think I videotaped it back then. Anyway, I'll keep an eye on that and I'll see whether it's running fast or slow. And I'll just do a micro adjustment on that screw and see whether you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise. I'll assume that you're turning it clockwise to speed it up and counterclockwise to slow it down. And then we'll see what the result is. In the meantime, I'm going to look up and see if there's a way of testing the accuracy of the quartz watch. Um, I don't think I've got software to do that because these things vibrate at like 38,000 vibrations uh, per minute, I think. Something, some crazy number of vibrations. So so anyway, that's it for today. That's a, just a look at two watches and I'm going to have to get on, on those watches. I've got a, a pocket watch coming in. Um, from a, from a gentleman whose work I've already done. He wants me to actually work on this pocket watch. Um, and I'll do that work. And he's a really nice guy. And I said, well, if you want me to take a shot at it, I will. Um, and this is what I do normally is pocket watches. So these other watches, I'm only doing them because it's a friend who asked me. Normally, if someone came to me with a watch, it would have to be an exceptional. It would have to be a friend or, or else I wouldn't do it. And just to end off the, the day, um, again, I've just retired recently, so I'm kind of taking the summer off anyway. That's the master plan, and I'm going to be able to get through a lot of watches and pocket watches this summer. Um, so, again, if you're interested in me repairing your pocket watch, um, I'm all for it. Um, if you want me to fix your watch, uh, forget it. Go to a watchmaker for that. Uh, and not a pocket watch maker. <laughs> anyway, I do watches too, but I don't like doing watches as much as I love doing pocket watches. So, so, so thanks a lot for, uh, for, uh, subscribing to my channel. If you've already subscribed and I've got more stuff on the go. So we'll see. And, uh, again, thanks a lot and I'll catch you later.